the weather warming up, we're all doing more fitness and leisure activities outside, perhaps in remote areas, camping grounds and parks, which can increase our chances of encountering animals. While most don't think of those animals having rabies, it's important to be aware of the risks and know how to prevent getting it. We begin in Berlin, Germany, with Professor Dr. Thomas Jelinek, a well-known rabies expert who has studied the topic extensively. Rabies is a viral disease. It's a virus transmitted by mammals. It's unique in that it basically kills everybody who gets the infection and uh, therefore it can spread it too. So what happens is uh, animal bites and with the saliva the virus is transmitted and then the virus moves from the wound to the brain basically. It moves following the nerves in the tissue and takes its time. And once it has reached the brain it multiplies and causes severe inflammation of the brain. And that's when the patient gets sick, get, get rabid basically, aggressive, and uh, you see that something is, is wrong. For most people, rabies is not top of mind. Here in the United States, we tend to think it's been mostly controlled with our national canine rabies vaccination program. But it can still be transmitted by wildlife, varies by region, and increasingly, bats are becoming the most common source of human rabies exposures and deaths throughout our country. Basically, rabies is transmitted everywhere where mammals are. So there's just one country, one single country that said no rabies at all, that's New Zealand. And the highest case rates or incidents, as we say, that's cases per people living in a country is in India, actually in Bangladesh. If you manage as a country to vaccinate the dogs, you can decrease the numbers of rabies cases dramatically because dogs live closest to humans. So they are the most important uh, transmitter really. And uh, therefore we have far less rabies in Europe or in the US, for example. Then it moves to other mammals that become more important like raccoons or um, bats. And the problem with rabies is once you got the symptoms, you won't survive the disease. Uh, so you have to re react really long before you develop any symptom. So the patient becomes irritable, aggressive, uh, starts reacting to light. Uh, they have fever sometimes, but not necessarily. Defects of the nervous system, um, epileptic seizures, becomes more and more uh, somnolent and comatose and then dies. Because rabies is nearly always fatal, if you receive pre-exposure vaccination, it is imperative that you also receive post-exposure treatment as soon as you can after a suspected exposure. Pre-vaccination against rabies is usually recommended to people who are at higher risk. So, for example, travelers, people going to areas where there's lots of rabies around, um, or people dealing with animals in any way, working with them or, or having closer contact to animals. Children are also at risk since they are curious, trusting of animals, and may be afraid to let their parents know that they have been bitten. So if they are bitten, uh, it's uh, usually closer to the brain, closer to the head. Uh, the distance for the, for the virus is just shorter, and therefore you have less time to react with post-exposure prophylaxis, giving them vaccinations after the bite. There are seven states that have the highest prevalence of human rabies treatments. California, New York, North Carolina, Florida, Texas, Virginia, and Pennsylvania. And it's in Exton, Pennsylvania that we spoke to the Glass family about their rabies experience. I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought I, there was a bug flying around my room. It ended up being a bat. And I woke my husband up and said, there's a bat in our room, and I ran out. He made me come back in. Yeah. And I was trying to pop the screen out and I could feel the bat flying over top of my head. We lost sight of the bat at some point. He finally pulls out a binder, takes the binder to the window and shoots the bat out. So when I started researching that, it, you know, if you got bit or you suspect you were bit or if you were sleeping while you were, there was a bat in your house, that's considered an exposure. So I went to go in the middle of the night, I examined the kids to look for bite marks. Bite marks is like two prong marks in your skin. Um, we did not see a bite mark, but it's, you don't know. They say you won't feel it. You may not feel it. 
So after doing more research, Teresa realized the link between bats and rabies and knew she needed to seek medical advice from her doctor immediately. The possibility of exposure left no choice but to get a medical evaluation of the need for rabies post-exposure vaccinations under the circumstances. At that time, I had a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old, and then I called the OBGYN because I was pregnant and then I called our physician. And everybody says, you need to get the rabies vaccine and you need to get it within 24 hours and you have to go to the ER to get it. We took the kids to the children's hospital to get their vaccines and they did great. The doctors were wonderful with them. Then I went to the local hospital and at the ER and got my vaccine. After everyone else got it, so I called around to a few different places to see where I get it and I ended up going, it was 11.30 at night till I actually got in to the hospital to, to get a get my vaccine so one doctor told me he comes in he goes you had a better shot of winning the lottery and I was like at first I was like oh my goodness he says but you know the outcome is if you have it it's you know you the outcome's not good so you definitely want to get the shot so once a person had exposure is you give them as much vaccine as possible and you give them immunoglobulins too so you give them antibodies from people who already had the vaccination to cover the first week about before their own body reacts and they build up an own immune response. Even their dog Bluesy needed to get a rabies shot because her vaccine had expired. And if you plan on traveling to an area of increased risk, don't leave things to the last minute. It's not a good idea to come one day before you leave and it's difficult to give everything. You need some time, so leave four weeks, three weeks, time span, then it's safe. If you're exposed, you need to get the vaccination as fast as possible. If you suspect a potential exposure, find help right away. Contact your state or local health department to inform them of your potential exposure and seek medical advice either from your physician or at an emergency room or clinic. If there's a bat in your house, seek medical attention. It's not worth the risk. Untreated, it's, it's fatal. Just get the shots. I'm definitely glad we did this just to not have to deal with the worry of it, you know, get it taken care of and know that I was okay was, was definitely worth it. Such great information and prevention is always the key. For more information, visit loweringtherisk.com or bavariannordic.com or just go to our website, thebalancingact.com. We'll be right back. <laughs>